Next fight in the car is going to be a flyweight bout at 125 pounds between two Brazilian fighters, Janissa Morandin and Liana Perezin. Liana is 7-4 overall, 2-3 in her last five fights. She hails from Cutaliba, Parana, Brazil, 29 years old, 5-5 five five in height with a 64-inch reach. She trains out of Yamauchi team. As for Morandin, who goes by the Evil Princess, she's 10-4 overall, 1-4 in her last five fights. She hails from Santa Catarina, Brazil, 27 years old, 5 foot in height, so 5 inches shorter, and a 61-inch reach, about a 3-inch disadvantage for her. As for the public numbers coming in on Tapology, to my surprise, 69% are coming in for Janissa Morandin and only 31% coming in for Liana Perez. And I think that this fight's a toss-up. It's really hard to get a read here. I'm going to say this with all due respect, like from the movie Talladega Nights when Ricky Bobby's like, with all due respect, and I mean with all due respect, they're both not very good. It's like, who's going to win this fight or who's going to lose the fight? Or maybe they both lose the fight or maybe it goes to a draw. They've not been active. They're both coming off about two-year layoffs. They've lost against decent opponents. They've lost against bad opponents. They've gotten crushed against their better opponents. They've both fought UFC caliber fighters and have come up way short in those fights. This is a fight where I want to stay away from from a betting perspective. I'm going to give you the breakdown and tell you why I like Liana Parizan to win the fight. But man, this one's a toss-up and truly gambling at this point because there's no reason to really back either fighter here unless you know something from the inside the camp you have close knowledge of the situation otherwise what i'm looking at here is two fighters at a very low level someone has to lose right and someone has to win and if you have an idea of which way to go on this please leave a comment down below because for me this is a complete toss-up looking at the fighter profile for Miranda, she was born in brazil she began her career in 2013 she started off 9-0 in the brazilian regional scene she's 1-4 in invicta she had a 1-0 amateur record some of her prior opponents, she fought Montserrat Ruiz in 2020, two years ago, lost a fight round one submission. That was an Invicta 41. Ruiz is 10-2 and two overall, currently 1-1 one in one the UFC, so not the worst loss, but she did get dominated, got thrown to the ground by a hip toss, and if you know Ruiz, she likes that headlock. She locks up Miranda on the ground with a headlock, then controls one arm, starts beating her in the head, and then gets a submission, but it was a submission because she was like laying on her neck, no real choke, just laying on her, and Janissa just taps out. A horrible loss from top to bottom. One, it was early in the fight. Two, a submission I've never even seen before. It was basically just laying on her neck or laying on her throat. I'm not saying she wasn't getting choked, but showed just a lack of ability to get up, no grappling skills, just looked like an amateur in there. A few more fights for her. She fought Emily Cody, 2019 round one TKO loss. Of course, Dakota is on this current fight card. She's fighting for the championship in the main event. She also fought Jandroba, 2018 round two submission loss. Now, Jandroba is in the UFC as well. Pretty good overall fighter. Jandroba dominated her on the ground in round one. And round two comes out, takes her to the ground again with ease and gets an easy triangle submission. And very similar to the Ruiz fight, Miranda just looks completely out of her element on the ground, cannot fight off any submissions. She's from Brazil, should have a basic BJJ understanding, does not do well with submission defense. And one more fight, Lavana Souza, 2017 decision loss. Quality loss in the fact that she went to decision against Lavana Souza. Souza is 14-4 overall and also currently in the UFC. So if there's one thing I can give to Miranda, she's fought some pretty good level competition, UFC caliber fighters. At the same time, she's also getting finished by those fighters. So it's kind of like this half glass full, half glass empty, depending on how you look at it. Now my concern is Miranda. She's been finished by all the higher level fighters she's fought against. So her durability is in question. This is a small weight class. It's a women's weight class and she's getting finished. Matter of fact, she's been finished in her last three straight fights. She hasn't had her hand raised in five years years a half a decade that's a long time without winning a fight she's also coming off of a two-year layoff that's never a good sign in your late 20s you should be more active at this point in your career and she has a significant height and reach disadvantage in this fight she usually is the smaller fighter and this fight should have a three-inch reach disadvantage and a five-inch height disadvantage now as for liana perosin she's also from brazil no amateur record she went pro in 2013 she has nine years of pro experience has fought in immortal fc xfc and also an invicta her most notable opponents again some names you'll recognize she fought Kay hansen two years ago lost her by decision in invicta that loss wasn't so bad back then. It's not aging that well now, though, because Hanson is 7-6 and six overall and just got cut by the UFC. She also fought Kanako Murata in 2019, round one submission loss by rear naked choke. Murata is 12-2 and two overall and currently 1-1 one one in the UFC. So again, you like the fact that she's fighting fighters who are UFC caliber, but you don't like the fact that she's losing to them. She also lost to Del Bonnie in 2018 via decision. And one more fight, Kimberly Novaez, 2018 decision win. That was her last victory. Novaez is 9-6 and six overall. She's on a five-fight losing streak, and Novaez has not won a fight in six years. That's the last person that Liana Perazin has beat. The one thing there is to like about both these fighters is the same quality. They've both fought against high-level fighters that are now currently in the UFC. On the flip side is they've come up short in those fights. Which one is better than the other? I'm not really sure. It's like picking straws. Now, some of my concerns for Liana, she's coming off of a two-year layoff. She's on a two-fight losing streak. She hasn't had her hand raised in four years. And the biggest issue is the size disadvantage. She is so much smaller than most of her opponents, and it shows right away on film. You see it. In this matchup, she's going to be five inches shorter. She's going to be much smaller. It's going to be harder for her to close distance, harder for her to reach her opponent. And I think overall, just harder for her to win a fight when she's so much smaller than her opponent. 
My final thoughts on these two fighters, experience wise and strength of schedule, very comparable, just about the same. For finishing ability, neither one is showing good finishing ability. They're getting finished, but they're not showing a lot of finishes on their resume. For durability, yeah, I question both of their durability. I think in this fight, it's a good matchup. Neither one probably finishes each other in this matchup, but whenever they fight UFC caliber fighters, they tend to get finished specifically by submission. And who's the better grappler? Neither one of these guys are good grapplers. They get submitted pretty frequently against high level opponents. They're both from Brazil. They should have a BJJ base, but you don't see it in the fights. If they get taken down, they can't get back up. They tend to get submitted. This fight is a complete toss up. I'd love to know what the public thinks more about this fight. Maybe you have some insider knowledge. Maybe you have an inside track on something that we don't know. I would not bet this fight. There's so many unknowns. If I had to pick a side, I think Liana Parazin is the slightly better fighter, more so just because she's got the height and reach advantage. And there's really no other advantages here that I could find. So I'm on Liana Parazin to win the fight by an ugly decision. Heck, maybe this fight goes to a draw. This fight right here just offers a ton of variables that we can't answer. And ultimately, both of them are coming off of these two year layoffs, losing streaks, have not looked good. It's a good matchup. Someone has to win the fight. So that's the breakdown, guys. Good luck with this fight if you're betting on it. And let me know what you think. Who you like in this fight?